and welcome back to YouTube. This is Booster Backs Buster here with another Wildcard Wednesday. Today I got a very awesome video as it features an anime figure review or more specifically a comic book figure review of the character Raven from the very popular uh, animated TV series and comic book series Teen Titans. This is the second edition run, which I believe just means that it's a reprint of what they did from the first edition, and it, they may have done a little bit of tweaking to it just to kind of fix maybe a few problems that it had. This particular figure is made by the company Kotobukiya, a very awesome anime figure company, and it's part of their Bisojo series. And it is presented in one-seventh scale. Now before we take a look at the actual figure of Raven herself, let's take a look at the box that it comes in. First up on the side here, this is the front window packaging, and it features, of course, the logo DC Comics by Sojo statue, Raven 2nd Edition, the by Sojo series logo, a very lovely image of Raven, which is a little bit different than what the actual figure looks like. And of course, up here, I don't know if it's on screen, you got the Kotobukiya and the DC official logo. On this side, you have some more window packaging. And of course, another very lovely image of Raven herself. And then of all the other logo information. On the back here, you have a very lovely uh, figure to drawing comparison back here. Of course the drawing sketch on this side and the actual figure final product on the right. And on this side you just have a full uh, uninterrupted sketch picture here. And I gotta say very lovely window packaging overall. But of course you didn't come here to see me review a box. You want to see the actual figure itself. And with that, let's take a look at Raven from the Teen Titans. Let's get a little bit closer there. Alright. Now the first thing I want to say is the figure of Raven herself is one solid piece. There is no uh, detachable parts. There is no nothing... There's no additional pace. It's all 100% one solid piece, and I gotta say that it's very nice. Don't have to worry about losing any additional parts. Just gonna do a slight turn around here. Alright, so with that, we took a quick 360 view of the actual figure, and I gotta say, uh, right off the bat, it's a pretty good figure, um, but I think I like the Starfire by Sojo figure a bit more. But of course, before I get into what I like and dislike about each, I want to take a closer look at this particular figure. Um, right off the bat, I gotta say, I love the dynamic pose that Raven is featured in. As you can tell, she has like one knee in a bent knee pose and one in more of a kind of like a straight and it looks like she's leaning back so it almost looks like she's either jumping back to avoid an attack or landing after flying. And I gotta say, either way, it's a really cool action pose. And her hands are in the motion of, like, she's almost ready to cast, or in the middle of casting, her Azareth Metrion Zinthos. Azareth Metrion Zinthos. I can't, obviously I can't say it right now. You, you guys know the spell I'm talking about, though. Like, she's right in the middle of casting her spell, and it's uh, gonna really 
hurt the opposition. All right, with that said, let's take a, qu a closer look at, the, at Raven herself, starting with the boots and the legs. Now right off the bat, you're going to see on both legs, she has a very solid purple boot, or dark blue, depending on uh, what you see. It, it's very close to like a purple, maybe even dark blue. It's very close to right around that area. Of course, this leg is in a very uh, more straight type of pose. This one's in that bent knee type pose. It's almost like a jumping scenario. And then of course the legs go all the way around with some nice motion right around the ankles and the knees. Um, once again just like the Starfire boot, the Ra Raven's boot are 100% smooth. So that is a bit disappointing that they didn't add any sort of treads just to make it that, that little extra realism. Of course, at the top, you have these uh, little bit of a lace to kind of, uh, just so it acts as a little bit of a buckle for the boot. And of course, Raven has some of the thighs exposed. Now, as we continue up the figure, you'll see that she is sporting this very lovely golden belt that it culminates with this really cool uh, almost golden eagle belt style buckle and I gotta say that's a really cool thing I like that a lot as we move up her uh, regular attire you can see shows some very lovely motion going from her neck all the way down through her knees here, very lovely motion with that, especially down here, it looks like the wind is really taking a hold of that piece. And of course let's talk about her cloak, one of the main parts of Raven. You see it supports that very dark uh, purplish blue. And I gotta say they did a really good job around the back of the neck here. I really love the uh, wrinkles and ripples on it. Kind of slides all the way around and then of course it culminates in the base itself which I think is a really cool idea. Now on the bottom there are flat pieces just so it can stabilize but when you're looking at it this way you're never going to see those so you don't have to worry about those flat pieces. Um, and then of course, before I talk about uh, the shading, I do want to talk about the hands. She sports these, I'm not exactly sure what you call these, they're kind of gloves that run all the way up past the elbow, but they're fingerless, they only wrap around the middle finger. I have no idea what you call those, that's, if somebody in the comments, if you know what those are called, please let me know. And then her hands are so articulate. They did a great job with her hands. As you can tell, they have these almost like a reddish, pinkish, purplish, somewhere in the middle there, fingernail polish. And Kitty has, has claws. Those are sharp fingernails. Look how much of a point they come to. That is some sharp fingernails. If she needed to, she could definitely uh, do some damage with those claws. Now uh, one thing to note, the purple, the purplish blue here is a very solid color. From what I see, they didn't do a whole lot of shading. I don't think they did the best job shading on this particular figure. Um, it's not super deep and it's not super, it, it, it's Especially from afar, you have to really kind of look at it before you could notice some of it. In my opinion, they didn't do the best job shading. It's uh, they could have definitely done a better job, kind of melding or adding some shade color, adding a little bit of 
they, they seem to do a pretty good job highlighting, but shading, they just kind of missed the mark on this particular figure. Because uh, when I think of Raven, I think of just like darkness and uh, with the shininess of the plastic, it, it just seems too bright. Um, that could just be me nitpicking, but I, I just think that the shading just is not there for this particular figure. Um, so with that out of the way, I do want to talk about the make it or break, the make it or break it point of any anime figure. I'm, I'm of course talking about the face. Now, Raven's head is kind of tilted down, so it's really hard to see this particular face, and it's shrouded in a cloak. So I'm going to try to share with you the best I can the face. As you can tell, Raven is sporting some very lovely red lipstick. And the lips are full. I mean, these are very well-defined lips. However, she is smiling, which is something she never really did a lot of. So I am a little bit concerned about that. Uh, the nose is a little bit larger than normal, but very lifelike. And the eyes are near perfect. They did a great job with the eyes. Definitely something that way she is looking at. However, with the smile and the eyes and the eyebrows, which some anime figures actually don't even do, uh, she kind of looks like she's just having fun toying with her opponent before she lands the final blow. So it's definitely more of a maniacal kind of a almost evil like grin that she is sharing here um i don't know it, that's the vibe i get I, I get more of a evilish style vibe and of course the uh the hair this is where the drawing differs i'm going to kind of share it with you as you can see with the hair on the drawing, it kind of has this wild wisp that goes right in front of her eye. The anime figure actually does not have that and you had barely see any hair on each side. I kind of wish they kept that wild wisp in there just to give a little bit of motion to the hair. Um, other than that, I gotta say they did a, a fantastic job with the face. Super lifelike, super realistic, a fantastic job. Uh, definitely, definitely brings the character to life in a more of a maniacal toying with her opponent type of sense. Uh, overall, with the exception of not being able to really see her hair, which I understand it's covered by the cloak, but I, I still wish it, like I said, the Wild Wisp, I kind of wish I kept that from the poster and the issue of shading it's very monochrome I understand that's Raven very shiny definitely not something that Raven would do um, overall I gotta say I, I'd probably give it a six and a half probably six and a half seven out of ten I much prefer the Starfire statue Raven's a great uh, compliment to it but the Starfire statue I just felt had a lot more personality and a lot more uh, variance to it. Uh, yeah, I think that with that said, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about for this particular anime figure review. Uh, well, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, yeah, that looks about it. Yeah, overall, I give this particular anime figure a 7 out of 10. Good, not great. Um, if you're torn between choosing Raven or Starfire, I say go for Starfire. Otherwise, if you're a fan of Teen Titans, this is a must-have. This is Booster Box Buster with a comic book figure review of Raven 1 7th scale made by the Kotobukiya Company as part of their By Soldier uh, series line. Signing out.